The Ohio State Football Pro Day was today, and the Chicago Bears were well represented at that Pro Day. Aren't they going to add more Ohio State products in the NFL Draft? Watch this video to find out and hear my thoughts about who the Bears could be selecting. What's going on, guys? I'm back with another Chicago Bears Draft Discussion video, which I'll be doing throughout the next couple weeks and months leading towards the NFL Draft, which is at the end of April. So subscribe to my channel if you guys saw my thoughts and my reactions on NFL Draft discussion NFL draft news and like I mentioned the Ohio State Pro Day was today so the Bears sent a lot of guys there they sent Ryan Poles, Matt Eberflus, Luke Getze, a bunch of others too which I'll put on the screen right now but you can see well represented at the Pro Day okay we sent a lot of guys there because a lot of guys from Ohio State could be going pretty high in the draft this year and I'll be talking about which players the Bears could be potentially selecting in the draft from Ohio State and who they potentially looked at today okay so Hope you guys are all doing well. Obviously, free agency is also going on still right now. There hasn't been any updates since last Thursday signing Deontay Foreman. The Bears have been pretty quiet the last week, so I'm hoping the Bears also sign some guys too because we still have needs at, at tackle, maybe outside corner, maybe, not maybe, definitely defensive end. We need more pass rushers too, and there's still, good, there's still guys out there like a Yannick Ngakwe, like a Leonard Floyd maybe, so... Still going to be more signings that the Bears are going to be doing in the coming, you know, days and weeks. But today I'll be talking about some draft stuff and let's just get into it, guys. Okay, so I want to talk about, you know, I think four or five players the Bears could potentially be looking at from Ohio State. So I'll just be going through uh, player by player and give you guys my thoughts on if this player would work with the Bears and if the Bears should actually target this player um, early in the draft. One guy that makes a lot of sense for the Bears is offensive tackle Paris Johnson Jr. Now, Paris Johnson Jr. has already played guard and tackle in college football before the Chicago Bears he would most likely be a tackle a right tackle right because we have a huge need at right tackle right now we didn't sign any major names at right tackle we already have Braxton Jones on the left side but getting a high upside tackle prospect in Paris Johnson Jr. would be fantastic for the Bears at pick number nine and if you look at his physical traits and his physical tools Ryan Poles is going to fall in love with this guy because his physical tools are exactly what Poles loves in his offensive lineman and especially his offensive tackle prospects why do you select Braxton Jones a guy from Southern Utah in round five partly because of his physical traits he had long arms he could move pretty well and even though he didn't play against good competition Braxton Jones got drafted by the Bears because of his physical tools and you know the Bears thought they could mold that into eventually being a great left tackle and so far in year one already it's worked out pretty well he definitely surpassed all all projections all expectations in year one why did he move Tevin Jenkins to guard instead of tackles partly because Tevin Jenkins doesn't have the longest arms in the world so he put him at guard and it worked out really well for the Chicago Bears and if you look at Paris Johnson Jr his physical traits they are fantastic okay six foot six weighs 311 pounds so good height good size if you look at his arms though okay his arm length is very important because that's the big measuring stick for NFL offensive linemen and arm length is 36.1 inches which is you know, much bigger than the class average of 33.8 inch arms. And I know a lot of people will say in the comments, that stuff doesn't matter. It's all bullshit. You should only be looking at the tape and nothing else. And yes, the tape is the most important thing, but Paris Johnson Jr. has good tape and good measurements, which is why he's going to be OT1 for a lot of teams in this year's class. Even though Peter Skaronsky also is looking pretty good at tackle, he has very, very short arms, which I'm sorry if you look historically across the entire league you know guys with short arms like that they don't project to be high-end tackle prospects they can be good tackle prospects but probably not a high-end prospect like Paris Johnson Jr. projects to be because he does have the physical tools to be you know a really good uh, starting tackle in this league so from a height and weight and length perspective definitely something that Ryan Poles is going to love a lot he also has great athleticism too he can move laterally pretty well he can move up and down the field really well so pretty athletic guy for his size and that's another thing that Ryan Poles again really values in his offensive lineman the ability to move to the second level and you know be a zone blocker in the scheme that we have okay that's why he didn't go after you know an Orlando Brown Jr. because he said he did not fit the scheme so Paris Johnson Jr. is a fantastic scheme fit he would fit the Bears really well now he's only played tackle for one year he played left tackle for the Ohio State Buckeyes last year did really well for them obviously the Buckeyes had a pro proficient passing offense a decent run game too but mostly a passing offense and if the Bears wanted to add a fantastic pass blocker that even though he has some flaws in this game okay his hand usage his hand technique is not the best yet because he's only played tackle 
for one year there's so much to build and develop with this guy where he would be a fantastic pick for the bears at pick number nine the next guy the bears could also be looking at is wide receiver jackson smith and the jig but i know that people will say oh you already traded for dj Moore. you don't need a receiver right now and yes i agree receiver is not as big of a need as it once was and i don't think the bears would be selecting receiver probably at pick number nine but i i can't say that for certain right because ryan poles does operate by the best player available approach okay if you look at his draft last year he drafted jaquan brisker and kyla gordon with our first two picks even though we had massive needs at receiver and offensive line you know because he thought that those guys were the best players available so it's not crazy to think that ryan poles could still think that jsn is the best player available when he's doing his scouting when he's doing his research and still selects him even though the bears do have three pretty solid receivers now um, because the Bears still need a long-term receiver, another long-term receiver as well, okay? Darnell Mooney and Chase Claypool both are at the end of their contracts at the end of this year. And I'm guessing one of them probably is going to be let go. I mean, I can't say that for certain because if Mooney and Claypool both do well next year, then you might extend both of them. But if you don't want to do that, if you want to have one guy on a rookie contract long-term, um, you know, from this year's draft, obviously JSN would be one of the best guys to go after and still could be a very fantastic fit in the Chicago Bears offense. I've already talked about JSN so much in my other videos, but I'll briefly talk about, you know, what he could bring to the Chicago Bears right here. I'm um, in this video, and basically it's going to be a fantastic route runner that knows how to get open. He's not the fastest guy in the world. He did not run a very good 40 time at his pro day today in the 4.5s. Um, so definitely not having top end speed, but he does have top end agility and lateral movement, which is pretty important for receivers at the next level okay it's how you can make your cuts it's how you can contort your body it's how you can you know find the soft spot in the zone it's how you can find a way to get open that really matters in the nfl we've seen so many guys in the league that have not tested really good at the combine in terms of the 40 yard dash but still have fantastic careers because they found ways to get open and they had reliable hands consistently which jsn definitely does have he outproduced chris olave and garrett wilson in 2021 okay two first round picks that are doing really really well right now in the nfl garrett wilson and chris olave they were outproduced by this guy he's mainly a slot receiver he's mainly going to be playing in the slot in the nfl but that's not really a bad thing anymore okay you see so many guys across the league that are really productive slot receivers like in amon ross st brown or you know justin jefferson even though he plays outside a lot now in the nfl he was viewed as being a slot only guy in the nfl draft and we saw how that turned out okay being one of the best receivers in all of football currently so don't be down on jsn because you think he's only a slot receiver that's selling him short big time because he could still be a very productive very high-end talent in the nfl especially with the chicago bears that could still use maybe another receiver you know a high-end one to complement dj moore darnell mooney chase claypool i mean that would give the chicago bears their best receiving core probably in their entire history for justin fields which would be fantastic for him okay to give a you know, a young quarterback that needs to break out as a passer, a fantastic supplement of receiving weapons. Now, the Bears already have a top 30 visit scheduled with JSN, so clearly they still have interest in this guy, even though they did trade for DJ Moore. So again, don't cross this off your list because we did trade for DJ Moore. It could still be an option for the Chicago Bears. Another guy the Bears could be looking at is offensive tackle Dewan Jones. Now, Dewan Jones is a monster freak of nature built in a lab type of player, okay? Six foot eight weighs 359 pounds so big tall heavy guy which is why i don't think it's going to be a very good scheme fit actually for the chicago bears okay mostly because of his weight obviously the arm length and everything is fantastic 36 above 36 inch arms which is i think the best in the class so long arms long build but the weight and the lack of mobility is why i think the bears probably are not going to be looking into him because he's kind of similar to like an Orlando Brown Jr. where you just question if he can fit in the scheme and move laterally the way that we need our tackles we need our offensive linemen to be able to move so he's going to be a second round target um, most mock drafts have seen him go in the second round or some in the late first but mostly in the second round which is I think a good spot for him because he does have some fundamental issues some technique issues but the you know the frame and the size is very rare okay you don't see a guy like him very often in the nfl draft which is why some team is going to take a swing on him but again i'm not sure if that team is going to be the chicago bears because of his you know inability to really move but if the bears do end up drafting him i think he will have to obviously lose some weight but if he does it and if you develop him properly if you let him work on his technique his fundamentals if you 
coach him up to being less of a penalty machine. He could turn into an absolute beast for the Chicago Bears on the right side of the offensive line. Let's stick on the offensive line again, okay? So many offensive line prospects in this draft for Ohio State because they've had such proficient passing offenses, okay? Really good protection for, you know, Justin Fields in the past and also CJ Stroud the last two years. And let's talk about Luke Whipler, the center, okay? He's gonna be a round two prospect, most likely for the Chicago Bears. For any team, he's projected to go in round two. And the Bears do have a need at center. Right now, we have probably Cody White here manning the center spot if we don't draft anybody, if we don't sign anybody. But I do think we will draft a center. And Luke Whipler could be a fantastic fit for the Bears, okay? He's very athletic, as you can see from his RAS score. So obviously, you guys know by now, Ryan Poltz loves his athletic offensive linemen. So from that perspective, he definitely could fit in a zone blocking type of scheme. You know, good enough speed up going up and down the field. He's kind of undersized though, not the biggest guy in the world, not the most powerful guy. So against the bull rush, that could be an area of concern, you know, against the bigger, stronger, best defensive lineman in the NFL. But for the most part, he could still be a fantastic, you know, solid center for the Bears for a long time because of his ability to pass protect pretty well. Okay, at Ohio State, he pass protected a lot because the Buckeyes pass the ball at one of the highest rates in all of college football. So if you want a guy that can help the Bears passing offense be better, Luke Whipler could be that guy. He's still going to be a good fit in the in the run game too because he can move. He can get to that next level, um, which we need out of our interior offensive linemen. So I think overall, you know, he started two years at center for the Ohio State Buckeyes. He's a smart guy. He can communicate pretty well. He can call out the plays, you know, call out the protections for the offensive line and probably be a really good center for the Bears for a long time to come. So another guy that I would be really happy if the Bears ended up drafting in round two or maybe round three at the latest. And then finally, another guy the Bears could be looking at the last high-end prospect from Ohio State is Zach Harrison, the defensive end. And he projects to be fitting in well into a 4-3 defense with his long arms and with his uh, weight as well, okay? So he's six foot six, weighs 271 pounds. He actually did not do any combine tests, I believe, because he got injured, according to my knowledge. So... Didn't really do many combine tests, but still, you know, measured pretty well. His arms are 36 and 1 fourth inches long, which tested as the best measurement in terms of arm length at the combine among all edge prospects in this year's class, which for, you know, a coach and Matt Eberflus, for a general manager and Ryan Poles that have talked so much about how they love, you know, long arm length in their, both, both their tackles and their edge rushers, that makes a lot of sense for the Chicago Bears. Now, he was not the most productive, though, in college, so his tape... In terms of actual production, maybe not the best, which is why he's not going to be going in like round one. Because if he had a very productive college career, he'd probably be going in round one. But he only had, you know, 3.5 sacks last year, two sacks the year before that, two the, the year before that, and 3.5 in 2019, his freshman season. But if you just look at his physical traits and like what do you have to work with here, he could be a guy that you put in your system, develop, coach up, and maybe down the road he could turn into being a pretty fantastic starter for you. But right now he could be at least you know, at the very least, rotational depth at defensive end, which the Bears badly do need. So still a pretty decent prospect for the Chicago Bears to consider. So there you have it, guys. Those are the main guys I think the Bears will be considering from Ohio State. Now, obviously, I didn't talk about Marvin Harrison Jr., the receiver that also ran routes and caught balls from CJ Stroud, who's going to be available in the 2024 draft, not this year, but 2024. Um, And a lot of the scouts there went crazy over his workout because he if he was available in the draft this year, he could have easily been a top three draft pick. That's how good he was in college football last year. He has insane top end traits, top end athleticism, top end production too. But that's not going to be on the table for the Bears until 2024. Um, If they do end up getting a top five pick from the Carolina Panthers, that's the only way we could be selecting this guy because he's that good. But unfortunately, not available for the Bears this year to select. Otherwise, we might have not even traded back down to pick number nine. But... Let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments down below. There's another pro day tomorrow. I believe Alabama's pro day, but some of the top guys like Will Anderson, um, Bryce Young, obviously are not going to be in the range of the Chicago Bears. So they're still going to go there, obviously, for the other prospects. I might make a video um, covering the Alabama pro day too. Um, if, there's enough, if, if there's enough guys, I think the Bears could actually be looking at. But otherwise, I'll be back with more free agency updates if there is any in the next couple days. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, bear down. <music>